This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, day 15. Our devotion title for today is God is Just and God is Merciful. But how does God manage to juggle both of these things that are apparently contradictory? They, they seem contradictory. How can you be just and deliver justice to people that deserve it, but also be merciful to everyone? Well, we're going to figure out that in today's devotion. So listen up, take some notes, and let's get stuck in. Media headlines frequently express outrage at judges who are soft on crime and fail to impose the appropriate penalty for the offence committed. When I worked as a barrister, I noticed that the legal profession did not respect judges who were regarded as too lenient. We expect judges to execute justice. We do not expect them simply to be merciful. On the other hand, we do expect mercy in our personal relationships. A loving parent will be merciful to their child. We expect friends to be merciful to one another. Justice and mercy do not normally go together. We tend to see them as alternatives. We expect either justice or mercy, but not both at the same time. Yet God is both a God who judges with justice and a God of mercy. How can he combine these two apparently contradictory characteristics? The answer is that the sacrifice of Jesus has made it possible for God to combine both justice and mercy. When I first encountered Jesus, the following illustration helped me to understand what Jesus achieved for you and me on the cross. Two people went through school and university together and developed a close friendship. Life went on and they went their separate ways and lost contact. One went on to become a judge, while the other's life spiraled downwards and he ended up as a criminal. One day, the criminal appeared before the judge. He'd committed a crime to which he pleaded guilty. The judge recognized his old friend and faced the dilemma, which, in effect, God faces. He was a judge, so he had to be just. He couldn't simply let the man off. On the other hand, he wanted to be merciful because he loved his friends. So he fined him the correct penalty for the offense. That was justice. Then he came down from his position as judge and wrote a check for the amount of the fine. He gave it to his friend, saying that he would pay the penalty for him. That was an act of mercy, love, and sacrifice. The illustration is not an exact one. Our plight is worse. The penalty we face is death. The relationship is closer. Your Father in Heaven loves you more than any earthly parent loves their child. And the cost is greater. It costs God far more than money. He came Himself in the person of Jesus and paid the penalty of sin. God is not soft on crime. In His justice, God judges us because we are guilty. Then in his mercy and love, he comes down in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, and pays the penalty for us. Through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, God is both just and merciful. From Psalm 9. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Rely on the justice of God. David knows that God is a God of justice. The Lord is known by his justice. He also cries out for mercy. Have mercy that I may declare your praises. In this psalm, the desire for justice and the desire for mercy come together. David prays that God will have mercy on him by executing judgment on his enemies. Arise, O Lord, let the nations be judged in your presence. We sometimes think of justice in a negative way as primarily about punishment, but justice is also profoundly positive. In Hebrew, the word for justice, mishpat, carries the sense of putting things right. It's because of God's justice that David can be confident that the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted perish. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God of justice. Thank you that one day there will be justice for all those who face injustice in our world today. Thank you that one day there will be justice for the poor and the oppressed. From Matthew 12. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the innocent. 
for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you has a sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. A large crowd followed him, and he healed all who were ill. He warned them not to tell others about him. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love in whom I delight. I will put my spirit in him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out, till he has brought justice through to victory. In his name the nations will put their hope. Receive the mercy of Jesus. We sometimes send parcels with the words fragile, handle with care stuck on them. Have you ever felt in need of one of those stickers yourself? Jesus is there for you when you feel like this. Jesus utterly rejected the legalism of the Pharisees, quoting and fulfilling the prophecy of Hosea. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Justice and legalism are not the same. Indeed, they can be opposites. Jesus breaks the legalistic, pharisaical laws by healing a man on the Sabbath in an act of great mercy, love and compassion. Jesus combines justice and mercy. He fulfilled all the promises of the Old Testament about God bringing justice to the nations. Here, Matthew quotes Isaiah's prophecy, which Jesus fulfilled. He would bring justice to the nations and lead justice to victory. Yet, he's full of mercy, love and compassion. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. There are times in life when we are physically, emotionally or spiritually fragile, like a bruised reed or a smouldering wick. Jesus continues to show us mercy, love and compassion when we're weak and fragile. When you are fragile, Jesus handles you with care. Jesus is quoting one of the servant songs from Isaiah 40 to 55. These songs are all about a suffering servant who will sacrifice his life in order to bring forgiveness of sins. In these servant songs, God's mercy and justice come together. The world is set right, injustice and oppression are ended, and the needy and broken are set free. Yet it is God himself who makes the sacrifice, who bears the punishment and consequences of our sins. Rather than being crushed by God's justice, you are set free by it. At the cross, justice and mercy meet. Thank you, Jesus, that you came as the suffering servant. Thank you that you enabled justice and mercy to come together through your sacrifice on the cross. Old Testament from Genesis 31. You know that I've worked for your father with all my strength. Yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. Rejoice in the sacrifice of God. Have you ever experienced a promise of promotion that never came or spent countless wasted hours working late to complete some thankless task? Have you ever been the victim of envy, false accusation or downright deception? So much in this passage resonates with our day-to-day -day lives, in our everyday situations of frustration and pain. It's reassuring to know that the Lord always has the last word. We see a breakdown in what was essentially a family business. Perhaps Laban took his son-in-law for granted. Certainly, Jacob felt his goodwill had been abused. He felt Laban's attitude to him was not what it had been. He had given his job 100% effort. He'd work with all his strength. I have served with all my might and power. Jacob's terms of employment had been very tough. His father-in-law had been a fairly draconian boss. He'd made Jacob pay for any loss that occurred due to accident or theft by others. 
his working conditions were very unsatisfactory. Further, he felt cheated. Instead of putting his salary up, Laban appears to have put it down ten times. Rachel and Leah also felt that they'd been hard done by. They'd been sold off to Jacob and then watched as their father envied their husband's success. It's understandable that they all felt resentment towards Laban. However, their response was not very gracious. They all ran off when Laban was out at work. They did not even give him the opportunity to say goodbye to his children and grandchildren. On top of all that, for some incomprehensible reason, Rachel steals from her father without telling her husband. In spite of all this, God blesses Jacob. But God did not allow Laban to hurt him. He becomes more prosperous than Laban. It was actually God who called Jacob to return home to Isaac and promised him, I will be with you. Although Jacob was doing the right thing, the way it was done was not right. Nevertheless, God intervened on his behalf by speaking to Laban in a dream. But for that, Jacob might have been sent away empty-handed. In the end, they negotiate a satisfactory settlement. In the midst of this passage, we see hints of the foreshadowing of what was to come. Both Jacob and Laban look to God for justice. Then there is sacrifice. As they seek God's justice and offer this sacrifice, we are reminded once more of the cross, where God's justice and mercy come together. Father, thank you that you are just and merciful. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. Thank you that in times of injustice, I can look to you for protection and mercy. Help me to be merciful as you are merciful to me. Pippa adds, Genesis 31, verse 32. I wondered what on earth Rachel was doing stealing her father's household gods. And what was Laban doing having household gods in the first place? Rachel had been stealing, lying and dishonoring her father. No wonder God needed to give us the Ten Commandments. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that I can trust in you to be just and merciful. Forgive me for anything that I have done. Have mercy on me, Lord. Lord, I give you today all of my sin. I lay it at the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 